peace that you'll have in your heart. Is that making sense? All right. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Paul. So let's all together, can we just give him praise one more time and thank him for who he is. He is Lord. He is Lord. And I thank you guys for sharing that. Everybody say peace. He gives us peace. Not like the world gives us peace, but he gives us a peace that passes our understanding. And I want us to realize that in the middle of our circumstance, in the middle of a place where we would like not to be, in the middle of a place where we didn't ask for, in the middle of a difficult situation where we wonder what's going on, we can give him praise in the middle of our, in the middle of our storm before the breakthrough, before the answer, before we see the answers to our prayers and we give him praise. And we see this word peace. I love this word peace. Everybody say peace. The meaning of Jehovah Shalom is a basic definition of the word shalom is, is a harmony or reconciliation of relationship based on, upon the completion of a transaction or a payment of a debt or giving of satisfaction. It's shalom. It's wholesome. It, it's, it's a ho holistic viewpoint of who God is. He wants to give us peace all around our lives. Peace in, 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 inside and outside. He wants to surround us with peace. Everybody say peace one more time. Shalom is, is translated peace 170 times we see in the scripture. Peace expresses the deepest desire and need of, of the human heart. We need peace in our lives. And it represents the measure of contentment and satisfaction in life. It is, it is a word that, that we see in Scripture that to know Jesus is to know peace. Amen? To know Him is to know peace. And we have a relationship with God through His Son, and it gives us peace. And then so I, th I started thinking about this word peace and how it transcends into what we've been talking about through the Apostle Paul in Philippians. So you have your place in Philippians. I want you to go back into Philippians chapter 4 just for a moment. And I want to give you a couple action points today uh, to take this with you. But I want to ask you, in the middle of your circumstance this morning, are you experiencing joy and peace, or are you experiencing anxiety and discouragement? It's a choice, and we choose which path we want to go on, and we are only, we're only human, and we, only, we go through natural tendencies of, uh, of, of, of these, these places of struggle, if you will, and we go through the emotions of this life. And I realize there, there are probably many of us in the house today, we have situations that, that can weigh us down. We have things that we're concerned about. We have, we have people that we're concerned about in our lives. We have, we have things going on that we can't control. There's a, some things we can't control in this world, amen? But we know one that can. He is king of kings, and he is Lord of all things in my life. And I make that declaration, and so I say, Lord, it's, it's, it's you. It's in you that I live and, and move and have my being. It's in you, Lord, I decide to, to place my, my concerns in, in, in these things in my life. So is it joy and peace, or is anxiety or in depression? What, which do you choose, and what, where are you living? And, and I, I look through the uh, Apostle Paul, and I'm back in chapter 4 again, and I see this where he says in, in verse 4 of chapter 4, you guys remember we talked a little bit about this already. What does it say? What's the word? Rejoice. Everybody say rejoice with me. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, what does he say to do? By prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace, everybody say peace, peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when you're placed in the middle of a circumstance that you can't control, that, that's, that's something you didn't ask for, something you're confused about, something you need answers to, there's a place in there. I want you to learn this morning, first of all, to choose to pray. That's what the Apostle Paul says. He says, choose to pray. Make your petitions, make your requests known to God. Begin to pray and seek his face. That's what it says right there in verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I want you to underline that word thanksgiving, if you will, or highlight that in your, in your scripture. It's so important to choose to give him thanks in the middle of your storm, to give him praise before your breakthrough. Paul directs our attention on prayer because many times we try to fix it ourselves, don't we? It, it, and when you try to fix it yourself, it, it, it can be a place of anxiety because we can't, 
meet the need. We can't do the thing that, that needs to be done. Only God can. And so my question to you is, when we ask in the midst of a season of anxiety, what are we asking? How are we asking? When we try to fix it on our own strength, we produce an anxiety. We, 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 try, to, we try to posture and make it our, ourselves. But heart posture of rejoice, saying, I'll do what I can do, Lord, but in the middle of my storm, I'm going to give you praise to do what I can't do, God. I'm going to live like it's up to me, but God, I'm going to trust like it's up to you. I'm going to do all that I can do, God, but I'm going to trust in you, God, to finish the work. It's a heart posture. The pathway to God's presence is a heart posture of rejoice. As, as Brother Harold said, I'm giving him praise before I get the answer to prayer. And Brother Harold's going through something right now where I, I see the joy of the Lord on your face. I, see, I hear the joy of the Lord in your words. I hear faith rising up in your heart. And e even all the things that you, because you've, you've been with the Lord long enough to know that he's, he's faithful, amen? He is faithful and true. And, he's, and he is going to be your God through this situation just like he has been in many times before, amen? And we're believing and trusting God for, for the outcome, that, that, for healing, for outcome that he, he's going to get all the glory and the honor for in Jesus' name. It's a place of posture to say, Lord, I'm choosing peace. I'm choosing joy. I'm not going to go down the road of, of, of anxiety, of worry, or fret. How many have learned when you go down that path, it doesn't amount to a whole lot? It only drives you further down. It only, it, it's like a spiral downward. You continue to, down that slippery slope. But I choose to say, Lord, in the middle of this difficulty, in the middle of the situation, I'm choosing to pray. And so the bridge that we find from anxiety to joy, the bridge, if you will, if you want to build a bridge towards joy and you're going through some anxiety this morning, you want to build that bridge towards a better place mentally and spiritually, then build that bridge by giving him praise in the middle of your storm giving him praise in the middle of your difficulty, giving him praise and saying, Lord, even though I don't understand how I'm going to get through it, I don't know why we're going through it, but right now, right here in this moment in my life, even though I may not feel like it, and I've got a lot of reasons to get upset or to not to worry or to fret or to throw the towel in, but God, in the middle of this, I'm going to stand and give you praise for you are worthy of all the glory and all the honor, and I'm going to give you praise in the middle of the storm. I'm going to praise you, God. In the middle of that place of difficulty, Lord, and I believe, God, before my breakthrough, I'm going to give you praise. It's a bridge from anxiety to joy. It's thanksgiving to praise him before my breakthrough. He says, I want you to lift it up in, in prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. So my request is, is laying my cares before the Lord as I praise and worship the God who is near. I love what James chapter 5, 13, it makes sense when you think of it in this way. Is any one of you trouble in trouble? Let him pray. Is anyone, uh, is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. You see, the prayer of faith is released through praise. Did you, did you get that this morning in James chapter 5, 13? We often think of that in, in a way of praying for others. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective in Jesus' name. But what he's saying is that when you give him praise, you, that bridge towards thanksgiving, that bridge towards uh, finding peace, he says, let them pray if they're in trouble. Let them pray. If, is anyone happy? What does it say? Let them sing. Everybody say sing. If anyone is in trouble, let them pray. Everybody say pray. If anyone is happy, is anyone happy in the house this morning? Come on. Is anyone happy in the house this morning? Hallelujah. If anyone is happy, then let him sing. I love praise and worship. My goodness, I, I love when we come together and, and, and we're all in, man, and we're worshiping God. I love those moments where we're worshiping and lifting up the name of Jesus. Something takes place when you lift up the name of Jesus. He said, if I'd be lifted up, Mark, that I would draw all men unto me. And so when we lift him up, there's a place in God that he brings us closer to himself. And I tell you what, Steve, there's, some, there's, a, there's a place in my life where sometimes it doesn't matter uh, what the encouraging word might come from somebody or even, you know, I try to pet myself up with the motivation. But when I get into a place of worship, Annette, there's something that God does in my heart. It brings me up closer to himself. It brings me closer to who he is. And I begin to worship him in a place where there's, there's, there has to be a place that, from God. It's a peace from God. It's a place where God reminds me that I'm with you. you it's going to be okay. We're going to walk through this together. You're never alone. I'm always with you. 
It's a place of worship. It's a place of that, that inner place where you just get into a worship place and you begin to worship him. And that's where it says, is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. The prayer of faith is released through praise. You see, this kind of peace doesn't make sense to the world. It transcends understanding. And, and so we see this, Paul, again, he's, he's near imminent death. He's in chains. He's leaving his church plants in the hands of incompetent leaders. He has every right to be pessimistic. Yet he writes in chapter 4, this place of giving thanksgiving and rejoicing in the Lord. He had, so so I, I get to give my burdens. It's no longer a weight. It's, it's something I can give to God as, as I give him this praise. I can sense peace coming back to me. So listen, guys, don't carry your burdens with you when you walk from this place today. When you leave from this place, don't carry your burdens back out the door and take them back into your home again. Don't carry your burdens. Give them to God and say, Lord, I'm going to worship you in the middle of the storm. I'm going to give you praise before my breakthrough. Amen? And I'm leaving my burdens at the altar today. I'm leaving my burden, God, with you. And I'm going to give you praise in the middle. Choose to pray. Secondly, I want you to think on right things. This is what the Apostle Paul says in verse 8. He says, he says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true. You guys know this already. Say it out loud with me. Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I want you to choose to pray, but I want also, he's, he's saying to us, I want you to think on right things because what you feed will thrive and what you starve will die. Whatever is pure, noble, will live or, you, or, or, will, or live in a negative world. We live in a negative world, amen? Does anybody understand? We live in a negative world. There's, there's a toxic environment around us. There's this, this world, and though, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There's, it's, it's a toxic environment. Philippi, when, when, when the Apostle Paul was writing this to his Philippian church, Philippi is a, is a mix of it's a cultures. It's, it's a very worldly place. We naturally pick out the flaws and not see the blessings of God in our lives, and we can, we can see the negativity all around us. But, but let, just give me, give me one thing to be thankful for today. Amen? And we, sometimes we get to that place, Lord, if you just give me one thing to be thankful for. And we're wired to see the negatives, but Paul is saying that what we see and what we focus on will, will influence our posture. It will influence our outlook on life. It will influence uh, what, what, we, what we feel, what we, the emotions of our day, what we feed. It, 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 Paul, is, is, he's, he has a right to be negative. He has, he's making a decision to focus on what is good. And we see this where he's, he's dealing with his thoughts. And he says, I need to think on right things. And you need to think on right things. Make it a matter of prayer and choose to pray and think on right things. And he says, also, when you deal with your thought, think on right things. And the next thing he says, he says, I want you to choose praise. Everybody say, choose praise. I want you to choose praise. I love this in verse 10. Read with me if you will. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance that I'm in. I love, I love that he's laying this out for us. Whatever life brings my way, whatever happens in my life, I've learned to be content in every situation. Some of you have had some major life changes this year. Amen? You've had some major life changes. They, 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 have, they have disrupted your, your, your rhythm of life, your, your normal way of life, and you've had some major changes and shifts. And I'm asking you this morning, and I want to remind us this morning in this place of giving praise before my breakthrough, are you at a place of joy and peace, or are you at a place of anxiety and depression and negativity? Think about this this morning. I want you to find a place in God to give him praise in the middle of your storm, to give him praise in the middle of this, because Paul says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether I'm well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Then he says this, and I love this, and we often quote this, but think about it in this context. How many have, have learned to live in plenty? Have you learned to live in plenty? How many have learned to live in little, in, in, in difficulty? In, in, yeah. Have you found you can be content in every situation? 
even the most difficult spots, Ralph, in life, to learn to know that God is still who he says he is, to know who I am in him and know who he is in me in the middle of any circumstance. And Paul says, I've learned in every situation to, to what it is to be content, in every situation, whether well-fed, whether living in plenty or in want. And he says this, and I can do, everybody say, all this through him who gives me strength. I can do it. I can do it, Marianne. I can do this thing, Miss Pat. I can do it through the Lord who gives me strength in every situation. And I give him praise before my breakthrough. I give him praise in the middle of my situation. I give him praise in the middle of my circumstance. I choose praise. Hallelujah. Paul says, I, I know what it is to be in need. I've learned the secret of being in every situation. And many times we take 413 out of context. He's saying, because I trust in God. That's where I can find this place of, of being able to do all things because I trust. Everybody say trust. I trust in God. Worry means, worry is a stranglehold, if you will. It's, it's a place of, of, of not trusting when I'm worried. It's a place of being fearful. You guys ever woke up in the middle of the night and you just, you're fearful. You don't know how it's going to work out. You're anxious. You, you're troubled in your heart. But there's a place in God where you can say, Lord, it doesn't matter how I feel in this moment right now. I come against the enemy in the name of Jesus. And I say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. You've got to get the word of God in your heart. And you've got to realize who God is. You say, Lord, no matter how I might feel in this moment, no matter this lack of peace in my heart, I come against it in the name of Jesus and I declare, Lord, that your lordship over my life in the middle of the storm, I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna trust you. Everybody say trust. I'm gonna trust you, Lord. And there's a place where I'm trusting it. If I'm, not, if I'm not trusting, then I'm worried. If you're in a place of anxiety and fear this morning, then I would say that you, you need to look at how you're trusting in who God is. If you're in a place of anxiety and fear and worry and concern, then I, I, would say, I would say to you that you're not trusting fully in who God is. You see, the opposite of peace is worry, and worry, anxiety is the place in your life that you are not trusting in God. You guys remember what, uh, what, what in, in Luke chapter 12, where we see this, Jesus is reminding us not to worry. Look at with me, if you will. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Who can add a single hour to your life by, by worrying? And, and Paul is at a place he trusts God, which led his, to his contentment, which led to him saying, I can do anything. I can do this thing. I can, I can make it because of who he is in my life. I trust in my God. I trust him. I trust him. Don't you love the opportunity that we have that in the middle of the storm, we, we, we can trust in the living God. Many times in the middle of a storm, we look for the quickest way out. Amen. We look for the easy way out. We look for the, the quick fix, the quick answer. How can I get this fixed? It's a survival instinct. Instead of embracing the season and learning to trust in God in the season we're in, we get into a place of anxiety and trust. If I just had wings like an eagle, I could fly out of the situation. Maybe it's that God wants you in that place. Because you're in that place, you're relying more on Him and less on yourself. You're, you're, you're at a place where you're contemplating who God is. You're asking the difficult questions. And I often encourage people, when you're going through the thick of it, don't lock up on God and get quiet on Him. Amen? Don't, don't go into this three days, I'm not going to talk to you thing because you, because you let this happen in my life. Don't lock down. But, but listen, ask God the questions. See, Lord, I don't understand. I, I, I don't mean to be frustrated or, or, or upset about this, but Lord, it doesn't seem fair. Let him know exactly how you feel and talk to him. Don't question who he is, but question, Lord, help me understand what's going on in my life right now. I don't understand this. Lord, if you love me, you wouldn't do this to me or you wouldn't allow this to me. And what, what, <clears throat> What if he doesn't do what you, what you hoped for when you pray? What if he doesn't answer the prayer that you want him to, to answer the way you want him to answer it? Does that mean he doesn't love you? This is it's so important. If you don't get anything out of this this morning, I want you to get this right here. Right here, listen to me. God will say, if you are faithful and content in the season you are in right now, and if you learn to praise him in the middle of this, Trust that I am preparing things in you for the future so I can use you. 
I trust you with, and trust you with more. In the middle of it, God will say, if you are faithful and content in the season you're in right now, and I know the instinct is, I want to get out of this. I want, to, I want to leave this place because I'm not comfortable here. It hurts. It's painful. I didn't ask for it. I don't know why I'm in this place. And I want to get out of here. I want to escape this place in my life. I don't want this in my life. And maybe you're, you're at a place of distrusting God. Maybe it's not, that's not the question you need to be asking God is to get you out of it. Maybe the question is, Lord, while I'm in the middle of it, help me to trust you. I'm going to say it one more time. Maybe the, the prayer you need to be praying is, Lord, not get me out of this, but Lord, help me to trust you while I'm going through it. Amen? Amen. To trust you while I'm going through it. I could share several stories in my life and in, in, in places in my life, and Mary Alice and I, throughout our, our, our married life together, where, where there's been places where we didn't understand, we wondered where God was at, and we, and we, 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 didn't, we didn't ask for it, we didn't see it, and, and it just seemed like a very difficult patch in life. You guys had those before, amen? amen. But I, and I, and I've not all been, always been faithful about this, but I've, always, but I've learned a lesson through these things, is that oftentimes God doesn't remove it from me, doesn't get me out of it, but he keeps me in the middle of it and reminds me who he is in the middle of my storm. He reminds me who he is. And he causes me to come back to trust him again. Listen, God may be saying in your life today, he may be saying this, and no, I want you to prepare because we're going to give him praise right after we get done here. God is saying to us, if you are faithful and content in the season you are in right now, and I know that's, that's hard to ask some of you to stay in that season you're in right now because I know it's a very difficult place. But the Holy Spirit would say to us, if you're faithful and content to trust in me in the middle of your storm and learn to praise me in the middle, trust that I am preparing you, preparing things in you for the future so that I can use you in ways that, that I've never been able to use you before and trust you with more. How I many want God to trust you with more? <laughs> that's not going to come easy. Learn to be content in all seasons. Otherwise, you will have a life of anxiety in every season of your life. Get away from the escape mentality and embrace the moment and think of the lovely and pure. Think, then you will learn to trust in God and that he is near. Um, and I believe that's where the Apostle Paul was at. He said, I have every right at this place in my life to be discontent, to be anxious, to be troubled, to be worried, but I'm choosing to pray. <laughs> I'm choosing to think on right things, and I'm choosing to praise him in the middle of my situation. Instead of this, this escape mentality, I'm just, I'm just going to say, Lord, in the middle of it, I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to begin to worship you, even though I don't understand. Amen? So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to continue to worship him. And then we're going to close with a time of communion where I want us to, to rededicate our families, our homes, ourselves to God and stand in the middle of the storm, stand in the middle of circumstances. You know what? You might be here this morning, and, and I, would, I would dare to say it's probably no one in the room, but you don't have a storm. There's something going on in all of our lives, someone we're concerned about, something, a situation that we're, we're praying that God will help us in. And so whatever that is, I want you to stand and give him praise before your breakthrough. Can we do that today? Can we give him praise before our breakthrough? All across this congregation, those in the balcony, those watching online, if you can, I want you just to stand to your feet and I want us to begin to worship him. And Noah's gonna come right now and begin to worship him with this presentation. Come on, Noah, if you will, just begin to worship right now. Father, we love you and we thank you. We give you praise in all things, God. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that's oh, here today. Your Holy Spirit that would quicken us and help us, Lord, to see and give you praise in every circumstance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, I love Amen. your presence. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated if you'd like. And we're just going to give him praise in the middle of our storms. Noah's going to give this, uh, this interpretive uh, presentation for us this morning. Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord.
God, I love your presence. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody compares to you. How lovely is your dwelling place. Oh, Lord Almighty, for my soul longs and even faints for you.
I'd rather be no mm. There's no place I'd rather be than with you There's no place I'd rather be I'm holding you I'm completing you I'm safe in you I'm secure in you In you I find my hope In you joy and you will find my hope and you will find my joy and you will find my hope and you will find my joy thank you father thank you jesus thank you lord how many would agree with me this morning that God is a good God? Amen. He's a faithful God. He's faithful. You may not can see that right now because of what you're going through. But he is who he says he is in his word. And he will be faithful to you. Can you pray with me right now? Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that as we posture ourselves and, and we place ourselves, God, in a place of um, thanksgiving, yes, but also maybe contemplation of who you are in our lives, I'm asking your Holy Spirit to lead and direct us now in this moment. And for someone here today, God, that can't see hope because of the hurt, and I can't see your love because of the situation, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would melt their eyes and that blind place on their eyes and that, that place of is covering their ears from hearing of your love. And remove, oh God, that obstacle just enough so they can see the light of your love and the hope that you want to give them today. I know life hurts and life seems unfair sometimes, but I want you to know that there is a God who created you, who loves you, who gave himself for you. He's always reaching for you. And all he asks is that you say, I give you my life. I lay down myself and I want you to be Lord. We're going to take communion today as a congregation and those watching online, I would, I would ask that you also maybe get some juice and some crackers or something in your home where you can join us. But before we do, as, as David cried out, Lord, see in my heart. And if see if there's anything, Lord, that's not pleasing in you and for, to you, Lord, and rid me of that. I want us for the next few moments to search our hearts. And maybe you're at that place and you say, I can't see hope. I can't see joy. I can't see peace because of what I'm going through. And Pastor, I need you to pray for me and I want to pray for you right now. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask God that you would help my brother and my sister, Lord, my friend, to see you for who you are. You're the same God that created them. You're the same God that's been with them every moment, of every, way, every step of the way. You're the same God who loves them in this moment right now. So, Father, I, I say yes to you, Jesus, and I ask that you'd be Lord of my life. Make that your prayer today as we search our hearts. And that's going to worship the Lord in song as we posture ourselves and search our hearts this morning before we take communion together.
Thank you, Annette. Let's all stand together. Let me remind you this morning that um, yesterday is gone. There's nothing we can do about yesterday. What we have is right now. And we have our next moment. And as long as the Lord tarries and it keeps us in this place, on this earth, we have tomorrow. But what we have is right now. And I pray that you choose joy. I pray that you choose praise in the middle of your circumstance. We've had time to measure our hearts and see where the, where the Lord is and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And I pray that you have decided to, to make him Lord of all. So we're going to take communion together. And what I'd like for us to do today, as we have before at Thanksgiving, is I'd like for the families, if you will, to gather together and someone in that circle, if you'll lead in this time of communion and uh, you say a prayer of blessing over the cup and over the bread and uh, you eat and take together. What I don't want is anyone to be by yourself. If you, if you came alone today or single, maybe your, your spouse is not with you or I want you to gather in clusters, if you will. Maybe three, four or five of you just get in a circle, if you will, and someone in that circle, you designate who you want that to be or speak up and say, I'll lead us. And I want you to pray one for another. I want you to pray over the cup and the bread today. Would you do that all across the house? Those watching online, we'll, we'll take together. If you'd like for us to take together, you can, you can gather in your home right there with your loved ones. But uh, if you will, just begin, begin to lead out within your groups. If you'll face one another and, and pray for one another and lead in that time of communion right now in Jesus' name. Those watching online, the, the Lord um, gathered his disciples that one last time in the upper room and he, he gathered them close together and he says, 
Every time you do this, I want you to remember me. I want you to remember my, my life and my death and my resurrection. And he gave him this bread and he passed this bread and he said, take this, this is my body, which is given for you. And I love the fact that he gave his body willingly, laid down his life for us so that we might know life. Take the bread in your hand, if you will, and let's break it together and let's give God praise and thanks for the bread. So Father, we thank you now in Jesus' name and we ask God your blessings on the, on the bread as we take together. We thank you for the body that was given for us. We thank you, Father, that you willingly laid on your life so that I might know you. And I ask your blessings on this bread as we take together in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He also passed the cup and he says, this cup is, is my blood is given for you. Remember this moment. Because of my death and my resurrection, I also live, but you live with, with me. This, this is the cup that we, it's a cup of suffering that we partake with our Lord. And thank him and recognize his love for us. So Father, bless this cup. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us of our sins. Thank you, Father. Let's take the cup together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you leave us in that give thanks again? The give thanks song, if you would. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So now, Lord, we want to give you praise and thanks, Father, for your goodness to us. And as we leave this moment, we don't leave your presence, God. And I pray your blessings over this congregation, over this house, over this community of faith. And we give you praise, Lord God, this, this, on this occasion, God, of thanksgiving, we give you praise in all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray, God. And I ask that you would command your angels concerning everyone in this room to guard them, with, Lord, in all their ways. That you protect them, provide for them, Lord. Direct them and guide their lives, I pray. I thank you that I can trust you with prayer, this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's sing it together. Give thanks. And thank you guys for being with us today. We love you. Jesus loves you. Have a great week in the Lord. God bless you. Give, Give thanks with a great